Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quest Love Supreme. I'm your host, Quest Love Cornelius. No. <laughs> Actually, Glad you realized. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Teens, you no, make the voice drop a few octaves. It's really, <laughs> I know, right? We got, <laughs> <laughs> got my fan, Fonte. You got jokes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just saying, when, you know, the Weird Al Yankovic show, I was like, hey, guys, Weird Al Yankovic here. But when Teens is here, I'm like, <clears throat> <laughs> Paul Porter, Midnight Love Swag, huh? Yes. You've reached the, the Captain jungle. Paul Porter. Quiet <laughs> <laughs> uh, storm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Quest Love Supreme. I'm your host, Quest Love. Um, wait, it just hit me. Should I even say that we're, you know, how to, like, is is Webby legit enough for us to be like, hell yeah, for that to be the preface to our title, like the Webby winning. Webby I don't know, the alliteration, yeah. the lit- image the award nominated. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Who, Mirror, who won that? Yeah. Oh, it didn't. Who 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 beat us? Was that uh, Jamil? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. It's cool. It's yeah. family. It's family. Spread yeah. the love. Spread the yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Mirror, um, if you try to say Webby winning enough times, it'll be a hit on cool. podcast history. Yes, the right. Webby winning. <laughs> I don't know. I still feel some sort of way that you know we we've been Webby winning for the longest, mm. and they haven't mm. given us our first award. So, damn, are you? Wait a minute, mm-hmm. yo, guys. This is this is this is notable. Mm-hmm. Normally, Laia, if if it's like Lenny Kravitz on the show or someone of note, oh, he just looked at well, me. Is y'all. it night right now, Laia? <laughs> no, but I mean, it is. She's she like, you know. It's... Oh, okay. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> you gotta show up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I've been around. Yeah. I've seen what she looked like. I've seen how she command the room. So I'm, this, I'm like, this is yeah. one of those moments where I wish that we were actually uh, a, 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 a live broadcast uh, with video and yeah. not just audio. Anyway, so yeah, Laia is is matching her her Lenny Kravitz energy right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, girl. The, the kids are coming out to play. Anyway, um, yeah. So Laia, you well, obviously you're fine because you know no. you got new artwork, fans, and everything behind. Oh, I'm good. I just can I just say something real quick because I usually don't share no news about what I do outside this show, but I'm just very excited. Number one, shout out some other podcasts, Love and Grit and Jada Ill, but also because. Mm-hmm. Me and my godmother, Deanna Williams, are producing a book for my dad on his photography. We're going to self-publish. And today we got the word that a big publisher is like, I won't end. So I just want to yes. say that. Yes. Let's go. There you go. Let's yes. fucking go. Congrats. Man. What, what was this? What was this era of photography? If you don't mind uh, asking. From the 50s to like the late 80s. And I'm talking like from, you know, he was the photographer at the White House during the first Met Black Music Month event. He's from the March on Washington to the 20 year anniversary to make uh, it a holiday. Just all the stuff. All the we, we, stuff. we got to interview Laia one day. Just, <laughs> yeah. just so we can find out about ourselves. <laughs> right? That's Straight up and down. That's all right. So, Bill, even though I know that you're not team Encanto. Uh, yeah. I'm still acting like you are. I know. Because all your peeps are, you know, about to. I mean, oh. I'd love to be team money bags along with being team Encanto, but. What, nah, Hamilton money is not enough for you, dog? <laughs> <laughs> you you created the thriller of Broadway albums, yo. Yeah, so did you. My Here's my together. Hamilton helped... checks are nice, so I know your Hamilton checks are really nice. Ooh, <laughs> they're okay. Tell it. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, uh, my girlfriend and I are getting a new condo. Yes, he said it. Yes, he said there it. You did you hear it? So wait a minute. You're moving out of what we no. haven't seen you. I'm staying in this place, but my girlfriend, uh, they're selling. We rented there. They're selling her place, so we're buying a new place. Well, that's good, man. I'm not getting yeah. married. Everyone stop with the knowingly hey, you know, listen. glances and everything. Hey, I've already hey, brother, been married. I don't once. believe you because Fonte Rumble young got man. Rumble. <laughs> I, I was listening. I, I happened to be listening to a classic episode when Fonte was happily divorced and thought that was how his life yep. was going to be. Ooh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. The good old days. Yeah. The good know? old days. I mean, you know, we, we should all have bliss and happiness. That includes you too, Steve. Mm-hmm. Sugar Steve. Happiness? What? <laughs> happiness is a thing. okay all right we're like happiness is thing uh fontigolo how, how's I'm it chilling going? man everything's good man good i'm happy to have teacher here today this has been a long time coming i feel like she's really one of the kind of quote unquote unsung heroes you know mm-hmm. of the genre and um i'm just really happy to get her story today so mm-hmm. this That's is good. good this is a dream come true for me man it's awesome. still too young for unsung mm-hmm well, yes, not I'm unsung, but you know, yeah. No, I was joking. It was just yeah. I know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're we're sunging her. 
Yeah. Um, well, yeah, as <laughs> as uh, Fonte mentioned about our Afro mentioned guest, um, I'm going to actually make it Afro mentioned. I think there you if go. It's black, there you go. I knew that that bill would instantly prove that. Um, Webby winning. There you go. Webby winning and Afro mentioned the two two words that we're you know making official. Um, our our guest today uh, is an awesome awesome singer songwriter, uh, hailing from the city of New Orleans. Um, New Orleans. Yes, I, I I heard that residents of Never New Orleans like does not like us saying yeah. New Orleans. No. We don't care what you do. It's just not how it goes. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I already know where this episode is going, y'all. Yep. <laughs> having having uh written having written for the uh for the likes of uh Mary J. Blige, Nivea, 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 Nivea. Nivea. Okay, I gotta yeah. I gotta you know I gotta get the the, the lotion and, yeah. oh, and you right. the human Ooh. Ooh. right. I gotta <laughs> get it correct. They, they the same. I gotta get it. Okay. Oh, she's named after the illusion. She's named. I don't know which came first. You know, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, there's also Macy Gray, Raphael Sadiq, uh, Neo, many others that we could name. Um, her now debut classic, uh, the almost 20 years old uh, "Complex Simplicity," was released to uh, critical acclaim in 2004, instantly garnering her uh, praise from critics and a very loyal fan base. Uh, we're very happy. As she's doing us the honor of chopping and mixing us for this long overdue conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Quest Love Supreme, the one and only Tidra Moses. Thanks, yes. sir. Hello, all. Hello, all. Yeah. Hello. I think I'm going to have to pull me some cognac for this one. Cognac. Yeah, I'm already, stay I'm on brand. Drinking, baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. She got people, yes. Bill. Dude, now I really, I'm truly wish this was a visual show because hey, this is the exact <laughs> backdrop that Denise Williams was in <laughs> in her episode. <laughs> right. Classic black and white photo above it and, yep. you know, an empty and glass a cocktail. Yeah. A cocktail. There you go. Damn, I'm, I'm what else do you need? That's bring not some bad psychedelics company, out, you know. <laughs> anyway, how where, where are you? Uh, where are you right now as we speak? I'm in L.A. right now. Okay. I live in Miami, right. though, but I'm in L.A. Oh, wow. oh, OK. You live in Miami. I see. Yeah, I see. Well, you know, thank you for coming to the show. Um, thank you for having I would, me. You're welcome. Um, I have to say, I think, did you ever come to any of our Grammy jams? I think we played together yes. once. Yes. But I don't think we've ever spoken. Mm. We played together. We've spoken like, I think it was like a text or something once. Yeah, That's in all passing, I remember yeah. Ever. Yeah, but never really like, hey, what's up? Ah, no, right. yeah, yeah. I feel like this is our... This First is our, time really talking, yeah. There you go. Long overdue. Long overdue. All right. Well, I'll start like I start with everyone else. Uh, where? Okay. So, where were you born? I know that you're hailing from New Orleans, but I don't know if you were born there. I was born in Jefferson Parish, which is right outside of Orleans Parish, and that's pretty much New Orleans. <laughs> so, I was born gotcha. in in Kenna, Louisiana, which is like the suburbs of New Orleans. Okay. Gotcha. So New Orleans adjacent. Yeah. Um, what uh, your family situation? Is it is it siblings or your parents? Yeah. What was it? I have. Um, two sisters, two brothers, four of us are from my mom and dad and one is just from my dad. The old. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I see. Um, can you tell us what your first musical memory was? Tina Marie. Um, my cousin was moving into a house behind my TT's house and we cut a gate in because everybody in, you know, in the South, we all live around each other, family lives around each other. So we would cut gates or, or cut like little paths to go to someone's house. And we tore the gate back from my TT's house to, um, my, my cousin who was moving to the house behind. And the whole time she was unpacking, she was just playing that Square Biz album. Mm -hmm. I was really oh, okay. little, but that shit was hard. I loved it. I just, I was a little kid loving Tina Marie. That's my first, I guess gospel would be my first because church. But the first time I really was excited was Tina Marie. Okay. That makes so sense. the, it must be Magic wow. Album. That was your, yes, that, was your card. that one. Yes. Okay. It must be that. Yeah. So good. And she was right. just unpacking and dancing and like all in her zone. It was her first place, you know, 
And I was just watching and I was loving the music and I was supposed to be helping, but I was a little kid, so I couldn't really help. But that's my okay. first memory of music, yeah. I see. Did you, uh, uh, any experience, like, did you go through church uh, as a singer or? No, I watched. And I think church made me feel like I wasn't going to be, I felt like I wasn't good enough. Because really? I had a sweet little soft voice and church, like, I come from Southern Baptist Church. And my oh, mother was also okay. a singer in the church. She was really big in, in our church, singing in, in like on the Southern Chitlin circuit of gospel. So they, they had such really powerful voices that I think I just never thought I was good enough. What was your mother's name? Shirley Moses. Okay. And so she pretty much I said, didn't did Denise the, the Williams say the same thing, Amir? That's so weird that you said she was looking like that. I was like, Denise Williams. Exactly. Exactly. Denise Williams thing. didn't have a a gospel southern gospel belter voice so she just right. felt like you know she had a, a a sweet songbird voice and she just didn't feel like she belonged so okay so you just tried to just blend in with the 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 rest of the choir you didn't do yeah, solos just, or anything no and i left new orleans kind of before i developed my voice i would walk around the house singing and sing in the shower and sing to the radio but i hadn't developed my voice yet I didn't develop my voice till I got to California, like high school. So I was I was little in while I was in the gospel. By the time we got to uh, California, we didn't really go to church as much, and it wasn't Southern Baptist. It was just more like non-denominational, non-denominational type music, which is totally different. Mm. Okay. Um, as far as um, well, your experience in, in New Orleans is it. Could you describe what the environment was? Um, you know, oftentimes, I think everyone in New Orleans either, you know, has second line experiences or, you know, it's it's almost like if 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 the movie fame were a city, I would imagine it would be New Orleans where people just bust out like, you know, everyone has to sing or do something musical just to just to live or breathe or whatever was that the experience for you down there like it's just music everywhere all day even if it's not down to like even if it's not as, as extensive as the second line you know you in new orleans it's music and partying all the time music partying and drinking and drinking and eating yeah. and eating and eating yeah I, yo, every time i go to new orleans everything. i just know 10 pounds you just gotta just yeah. just give yourself that grace because you know yeah. it's over with exactly <laughs> There's no such thing as being a pescatarian or a vegetarian. You can't do any of that stuff there. You just eat, you know? Whole plate how, brown. At, at, no, no vegetables. And if they no. are, they're fried. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, Facts. New Orleans, growing up in New Orleans, there's music everywhere from, you know, jazz on the streets, if you're in the city, you know, to gospel. Gospel is very, very big there. Zydeco, um, you know, then there came Bounce. And hip hop was always big for us. But before Bounce, we just listened to, uh, New York hip hop, you know, so it was like more based on that and music everywhere. I don't ever recall, like even the school I went to, I went to all black school, uh, private school by the name of St. John of Arc, and we had choir and our teacher was a lady named Miss Shatters who passed not too long ago, but she's like the first person that kind of showed me my voice. We just had music everywhere. Sundays on yeah. church, Tuesdays and Wednesdays or whatever for choir rehearsal, you know, all my brother and his, his, uh, turn to music everywhere. We had block parties. And then outside of that, then you do have second lines and all. it's just music everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's, it's to the to, point that you don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. It's just there. I want to ask you a, a question um, since you're from the area about Zydeco, because that's just a, a kind of music that we didn't really in the Carolinas. We didn't really get a lot of it, but like a lot of my homies, like Louisiana, um, Texas, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's and it has a big black following. Like I follow yeah. a lot of like dance stuff on um on IG, like a lot of dancers. And there's like some Zydeco dance, like they was doing. Them motherfuckers was getting it. They like was killing Stephen it. Fonte. Zydeco like is not it's not stepping. It's like a it's it's a you dance because you dance in close. Like the the, okay. the man and the woman dance close, so it's not like a step. But um, but it's crazy. Zydeco dancing. I'm just only I just know the music. It was a club. Them man, they was getting it was dudes in cowboy hats and shit. It was all brothers, like brothers. Yeah. They was. I've never seen man, black side go because all my black, all my side go experiences are like the white guys. Well, there's I, that because it's, it's a little bit more Cajunish than Creole. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
it's more Cajun Gatorish than Creole, which Cajun and you know Cajun and Creole is totally different. It's kind of like yeah. white black, basically. You know, Pretty much, Creole is yeah. more black. Cajun which part is, is which the black part? Creole the black part is, is Creole. Black, okay, Cre- Creole is black in French, African in French, and then the Cajun is more from when uh, the Louisiana Purchase happened and it, all, it went all the way into Canada, and then they migrated down the Canadians. The French Canadians migrated down to Louisiana and they're kind of like above us. They're not really in the bottom. They're not at the bottom with us, the Creole people, but they mixed eventually came down, but it's more like, here's a simple thing. Creole, we eat our gumbo with rice. Red sauce, oh, okay. All right. Cajuns sauce, eat their okay. gumbo with, uh, with like, uh, what do they eat it with? With uh, potato salad. They went out? It's just totally different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's really? It's totally different. Cajun. Okay. White French from from Canada, uh, Creole African French. Okay, so since you opened the door, now I gotta ask: uh, Are are your uh, culinary skills as good as your musical mm. skills? I can cook. I can really cook. But here's the thing: I started trying to be healthy, so I have to go back to my old ways to really, you know, throw it down for you. Yeah. Like I don't use butter and everything anymore, but I use butter and everything when I'm cooking good because that's the base <laughs> of all the food. Really okay. good butter, you know what I mean? Nice. So I can cook. I can definitely, I mean, nobody's going to leave my table not please. Or my bed, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yes, we will be <laughs> over exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this is what I was here for. That's why I dress like this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's working. It's, it's like, you take it's all like what's your train mm. to do in the South? You're training those areas. You go, you know, you go hard in those areas. Your bedroom, your kitchen, you get that together. You got everything good. Oh, that means your workout game must be amazing. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because you got to have energy and you got to have room. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'm at a loss for words right now. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot right. who I was uh, interviewing. So, so uh, I was thinking about um, your, you talk about your LA days. I didn't know. Um, talk about your days with the uh, the Good Life Cafe. Like, I understood you came up kind of oh, around yeah. that scene. Yeah. I, I moved to LA at 14. And I moved to LA and I moved, I didn't move to LA. I moved to West Covina, which is in the Valley. Oh, wow. And so we would travel into the city to get, cause I moved from New Orleans to West Covina, the Valley. It was culture shock. So I found friends that came from, you know, their parents had taken them out of the city cause it was gangs and stuff like that into the mm-hmm. Valley. And so I found friends that I could travel into the city with and we found good life and the Mer Park and all that stuff. And it was just, an unbelievable movement, you know, of musicians and hip hop. And I also was my, with my uh, son's, my children's father, Razkaz. And so Razz he kind of yeah. would, I was kind of like you know, running around with him and, and I would just, it was amazing. It was in, in retrospect, we didn't know then what it was, but in retrospect, it was kind of like a, a big pot of all these creative people. And it just kind of spilled and bled onto you. You know, you learned about things that I, I knew jazz, but I didn't know the kind of jazz that, they were telling me about. I knew about hip hop, but I didn't know like what, you know, it was just like a really, really great community of young musicians and, and young creative and not all musicians. Well, who some else was, did other tell things. us who else was in the good life. Cause I think for some folks who never heard of it. Well, I wasn't in it. Okay. You were just start, affiliated. Yeah, I don't want affiliate. to she was there to witness it. I, mm-hmm. I would witness it. I would witness it because they would have uh, these functions mm-hmm. and you know, people well, write, uh, uh, the one that I probably would probably was more versed with was unity. Bigger B, I think his name was. He did this thing Bigger called B. Unity. Okay. Yeah, and he had this thing where he would bring all of these different artists to LA. He was like the first person to bring all these different artists to LA. I knew Good Life and I would be around that, but what I paid attention to more so is when Raz would go to uh, Good Life. I mean, not Good Life, Unity. And we would see like Wu-Tang Clan, all these, all these different people that really weren't coming to LA, you know, when they were first starting. Mm-hmm. But Good Life was more something that I was around a few times. Unity was to me the thing that I don't think gets talked about enough in LA. Bigger B had a whole movement. I think the first person that kind of had this going on was pre my time was the Uncle Jam Army guy. Uncle Jam's right? Army, gotcha. But, gotcha. Yeah, but Bigger B was like that for real hip hop and you know true hip hop lovers, you know. And I was just kind of like a tag along with Raz. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Oh, well, y'all both. S- okay, no. Oh, no, no. I was going to say that. Um, it just hit me that. My first year at Fallon, this uh, new filmmaker named Ava DuVernay came to interview me. Mm-hmm. I believe her first film project was about the Good Life Cafe. 
Oh wow! I think it was yeah. called this is. It was, it was called This Is The Life, I think. I saw um, that. Yeah, but I I, has that has that officially, have you guys seen it? Has it officially come out? Or? I saw it. It was, yeah, it was on Showtime or something. I saw it before. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think, I don't want to lie, but maybe that's not what I saw, but I saw a documentary type of thing about Good Life. Yeah, no, no. Hopefully that's, it, hopefully that was her first joint. Okay. Yeah, I know I that, uh, yeah, for, it, it's, um, I know, but, well, it's, Bus Driver, one of my favorite underground or I hate saying underground it's such a you know it's like damning someone to only the purple property at the beginning of uh the monopoly board but critically you know if you're playing. a fan of like freestyle fellowship um the jurassic five cats um mm -hmm. that's very that's good like, life yeah Pitcher okay. john oh medusa like medusa I, yes yeah i'll say like you know when we first started even though they were at the tail end of oh far side also like we were at the tail end of they were at the tail end of of their era that's when the roots first started coming out there but we like met a lot of those guys so almost felt like we were you know their distant cousins um often doing shows out there and you know, also, why don't big, more people? Can be... I ask a question really quickly? Mm -hmm. Why don't more people talk about the far side? Because I think the far side for the West Coast was kind of like, and mm -hmm. they maybe this is overstepping, mm -hmm. it's comparable to Tribe Called Quest to mm -hmm. the extent. I, oh, 100%. 100%. I see Bizarre Ride, Bizarre Ride. I mean, uh, that's it. That's that's Midnight Marauders West Coast, like, even, I don't know. but their name doesn't come up like, even, like that because you know? the thing is, is that you know, unfortunately. Yeah, I was trying to figure out another uh, a two piece with Biscuit, which mm. is like Biggie. Like, unfortunately, it's like, you know, for the far side, one, it's been 30 years and it's really technically two albums like. But that album, kind of, that one album, no, I'm here. Like, they kind of no, they took themselves out the running, even though both I albums were so. classic. Mm. And both. here's the thing. Eminem will say all day. That literally, Eminem, you know, s said this a billion times that his whole presentation, like the cartoony voice, the 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 wordplay, all that stuff, like Bizarre Ride to the Far Side was Eminem's hmm. blueprint for the first three uh, first three records of his. Like if you listen to a rhyme and all that stuff, like the cartoony voice and all that stuff, like he's essentially just wow. you know that's him owed just overdosing on on the far side um yeah you're right definitely for a lot of i mean i, I wasn't those people that like went territorial like oh they're east coast they're west coast but i definitely remember them changing the perception of of what mm -hmm. we thought Los Angeles rappers yeah. were. Nah, for us yeah. it was for us on this side it was far side of course mm -hmm. absolutely souls of mischief yeah. and the alcoholics alcoholics, the alcoholics. they was like yeah man yeah. listen them was my niggas i love yeah. Yeah. yeah but i i'll say that um when we heard bizarre ride to the far side that was the prime reason why um we the put pipe? scott storch in the roots because mm. you know they were using it's so weird that you know, even though Tribe had been doing it, um, the way that Jay Swift was using Fender Rhodes on that album, like I couldn't even, you know, the whole tremolo sound and all that stuff. Like I was like, we need that sound too. So <laughs> enter Scott Storch coming into the roots, and you know, uh, but yeah, we we don't actually they reunited um, mm -hmm. with the is it Booty Brown that's not in the group? Or, I know that. Fat lip, was fat, fat lip is back. Fat lip, I think. No, fat okay. lip is back. So back. now it's fat okay. lip. Uh, Trey it's never everybody. It's never everybody. And Amani, yeah, man, I, that like, frustrates me so much. Me man. too. Me too. Like now, I just, I just love what they did. And I just would really like it. And when people are talking about that era, they would get a little bit more because they. I really, I saw how much they influenced a lot of the rappers that came right. after mm -hmm. them in, on the West Coast. All right. Um, my gift to hip hop is I, I got to start a life yeah. coaching service for <laughs> rappers. No, it's real. Like I'm currently, I don't know, even know if I should say this. I'm trying to get my life coach to talk to both Run and D 
uh, okay. about how much valuable time they are wasting mm. because I mean, Run DMC is like our Rolling Stones, yo. Yeah. And mm. for them to just, it, it's Not a communication really. issue. And I've talked to both of them and they're down to like, yeah, okay, I'll do the live coach. Like, like, like hip hop needs this. And if, if you can, I see. What I mean, you went through it. So you got to get the guys together. You basically saying, oh, yeah. they got to be together so that we can champion them so then they can really win and we can yeah. champion them like a lot of these other legends. Yes, I got it. So right now, the far side is back as the far side, although technically now they spell it with an F and not hmm. a PH. So I'm I assuming. Wait a uh, it's some legal uh, shit. Yeah, you, know it. yeah. his head. you don't you don't know what's happening right now with the. Like, I had no idea none of this was happening. Not with the yeah. F, so man. they they're they're now. If you go on their Instagram page as the far side, two words F A R S I D E, um, like the cartoon. Yeah, oh yeah. snap! Like, right, like how's that more than whatever? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's three fourths of them are are back now. So yeah. did it weird him out when you finally? became transparent with your voice and sort of came out the shadows like okay I'm seeing I'm pursuing this did it no I don't think it weirded him out I just remember uh we weren't together at this point he introduced me to the guy Paul Pauly that I did the first time we started working Paul Pauly started working and then he was supposed to be involved he was supposed okay. to be involved but I think it was just like oh this is my baby mama she's singing you know okay. what I mean so he didn't really uh... pay attention and I, I remember one day we were driving somewhere and he was like, this is really good. We're going to make a lot of money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we sick. Like, who? <laughs> we sick. <laughs> no, wow. No, I only asked that because, yeah, I, I dated someone who uh, never revealed to me that she was a classically trained pianist. <laughs> oh, wow. So I accidentally. How long, Quest, did you That's, date her? Um, French. It was like it was like two years. Like I, I think I shared this story before, where I, I was late for a sound check, had to circle back to the hotel, and I, I was in one of those suites that had a piano in it. Uh, uh-uh, you ain't talking. And she was this. I mean, it was like a couple of steps steps above, like for a lease. I mean, it wasn't like, but it was like, like I walked in the room, and I'm like, what is this? It's like two years. Like you didn't tell me, you know, I play piano. So, yeah, that that was that was weird to me. That's what I meant. Yeah. Like, did you hold it back no, for so long? No, like, he okay. knew because I was. He knew I could have like a little. He knew I could sing a little because he would hear me around the house singing, okay. or, you know, little things like that. Okay. So you said that your first entry into the business wasn't even with singing; it was with fashion first. Yeah, my best friend was a wardrobe. She still is to this day a designer, uh, Nadra Kinsey. She was a wardrobe stylist at the time and um, I needed money. I got mm-hmm. laid off on my job from sitting there surfing the internet too long. I was bored. What were you, and what was the job beforehand? I was an administrator, a, a assistant administrator at um, a uh, a uh, architectural firm that okay. built, built- You was uh, bored. High, oh, I was bored of shit, girl. Oof, girl. And the internet was new. <laughs> so I would just be on the internet Looking at anything I could look at, and this is back when it was dial up. So, oh man, <laughs> oh wow, so you, so you tying up, you tying up their phone. Yeah, <laughs> wow. spending that He's money. Not hey. up their phone I'm shocked the, that she's not an OK call. player, yo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, I'm, right. I'm shocked she's not a vet. Yeah, <laughs> talk about. Can you talk about being a stylist and like that moment? First of all, when you felt comfortable enough to make the transition and let people know, were you slowly letting people know? Like, would you sing a little bit while you're just, you know, fixing an outfit and somebody was like, no. hey, girl, nah. no. No, and, and maybe that's what you're supposed to do, but I think that's corny as shit. I think whatever you're there to do, that's what you do. Do that, you know? Okay. Yes, that's how I feel. So I would be there putting on somebody's shoes or rolling down, you know, and I, even with like guys trying to talk to you or whatever, I, I just always kept it as a job. That's how I take care of my sons, you know? So I just kept it as a job. And like I said, I would be around these different people, dancers, singers, artists, all this stuff. And I go, hey, teach them about. And if you smoke cannabis, if you're in a on, on video sets, you're going to be in a circle with all kinds of people. Right. So they know you. Mm-hmm. We you know, the music universal. Yeah, we're smoking yeah. together. Once you're in a cycle with somebody, that's your best mm-hmm. friend. You know, we'll talk about so, yes. <laughs> so we would all be around smoking, doing, you know, in between, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. But I just never mentioned it because, first of all, I'm shy. Which no one knows that. I, <laughs> no, I, can, shy, I can believe it. 
I, okay, I, when it comes to her talent, I believe you're, you're shy. shy. That's why I, I'm, 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 I don't like yeah, rejection. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So if someone was to tell me I wasn't good, it was going to either get violent or sad. One of the two. I was going to either cry damn. or hit you. <laughs> Tedra Moses. True Sagittarius energy. Yes. Yeah, you see him a little overly hot. Violent or sad? Violent. Like, just... You went full Kiki Wyatt on us. Okay. No, no, no. I'm better now, son. But the thing is, you know, back then I didn't like. <laughs> Wait a minute. She didn't deny. She just out there. I was young, you know, but no one knew. No one knew because I was just doing my job and I just was appreciative of what I was doing at that time. And I remember uh, Raz and I broke up and that's when I started pursuing it because it was like I can't just I saw my friend doing what she loved and I stopped I stopped doing uh um the wardrobe styling because I broke my leg and mm. while I was sitting there on downtime and, and collecting my eighteen hundred dollars a month in um the what do you call it when work is comp work is comp I was like girl you gotta figure something out and like, did y'all have the twins at that point y'all oh yeah, the twins, twins were born full fledged in this thing I was they were like three years old I was, oh, wow. you know, Raz and I went together. I was pretty much taking care of them by myself. And it was like, you got to figure this out because I, I couldn't, I couldn't like go work at the post office. I would be one of those people that killed everybody. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't do yeah. that. But did you know you could write a song? Did you? But know she's that? better now. Yeah, and I'm like, but did you know <laughs> no, that? See, when I say this, I'm saying that from the standpoint, people, you can't stifle things in you. You can't like suppress these things. It right. may yeah. come out wrong. It's gonna know? come out in one way or the other. And, and it That's might real. Not be good. So I, um, I did know I could write songs because I would get all the Raz would get these packs from Dick J Dilla. And that's who I would write over. I would write over unreleased Jay Dilla beats. And I didn't even know who the fuck Jay Dilla was. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. When he was getting these tracks, I didn't know. I was just singing over them. And I loved um, Like Water for Chocolate. I loved that album so much. And eventually he told me, oh, that's the same deal that did, you know. And it came together. But I wrote so many songs over Jay. I wrote like maybe to one beat, three to four songs. Because that's what I had. <laughs> did you tell? <laughs> did you and Jay Dilla ever? Did he ever know that? Like, did you? No, ever? I didn't. I, I know. I never met this man. Oh, I didn't. Wow. I didn't know. You know, I didn't know. I just loved music, and so what Raz would have, I would go through whatever he had, and he. he I remember he particularly had this CD from Jay Dilla, and I would play those that CD over and over, and write songs to those. Um, I would write over Prince records. I would write over already written songs that I would just hear the music and start mm. to formulate my own song over the music the I just that's, to make that's music. harder that's that's harder than a lot of people realize to like write over oh god yeah to take oh, like a ghost, song that's like a style yeah yeah like to just take something that's already established and just write a new song over that to hear that in a different way like that's yeah, that's forget. a skill and that's what she couple do of Prince songs. I did that often I just you yeah. know I don't know if you guys ever were in a place where you couldn't do it or it didn't seem like a realistic thing for you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do yeah. it however I could do it because it was in me and it needed to come out to the point that it was making me depressed and sad. I didn't even know mm. why, you know? So I just had to do it. And I would just take Brad's computer or, and put in his CD and just start his CDs of beats and start writing, writing songs. Uh, how did Wait, can you, I, oh, go ahead. Can I ask one question? Cause the thing is, is this might be the only chance that we get to ask a former stylist a question. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And I'm also, Facts. you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Kenya Barris supporter and completist. So, you know, Zoe's character on, on Grownish is a stylist now. Yeah, she is. Oh, good for you, Amir. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting all my Ken, Kenya Barris projects, you know, thick and thin. Um, but my question is for, can you, what is the process of being well? First of all, who who were your clients? Were these established? Yeah, music. Oh yeah, no, we we were Will Smith uh, styling team for about two two to three years. Um, oh wow, Khalees, Nas, Ooh. R. Kelly. These are good looks. Face. These are looks. Yeah, we would. My friend, she had two of us from high school. We were just high school friends, like having fun, you know. And so she was the key. Nanja was the key. My other, we were all three best friends. Nanja was the key. I was um, more administrative mm -hmm. and my friend Maisha Long, she was also like a second in line for like uh, creative. And um, we would kind of like the mod squad. I don't know if you ever heard of the mod squad with June mm -hmm. Ambrose. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were kind of like that. And um, you know, we would be on different, different sets. She would have three jobs going at a time. I'm on this set, this one on that set. We got assistance under that, you know, we had how a whole you, thing moving. How do you secure like, okay. 
So for me, my my croc obsession is getting a little crazy now. <laughs> so how do you secure accounts from do you go to like to, fr from established companies and also from newer people? Like, how you do you call them? You just call them. <laughs> so you, we, back then, that's all we had to do was call them, send them a letter, let them know that we're working, fax them back then, a letter, let them know that we're working on something. And if they were interested in that artist, they would um send us product. And back then, you know, back then it was like lots of money involved. They gave you, people were giving a lot of things away. So we could go to Puma and pick clients. up with this. You yeah, we did. We, I know, but even when we would come in with a new, maybe because we had top clients, when we mm -hmm. come in with a new artist, we could get them all stuff. I mean, we would do projects sometimes and pay for nothing because mm -hmm. we could get so much stuff for free from these different um, companies. But we, I, just kinda, I also, we just reached out. But I also know that it's problematic where an artist will like uh, an article or garment a little bit too much, and then you're not going to see it again. <laughs> yeah, I've okay, been, so... I've been part it, of many video shoots where it's like, where are those Jordans at? You know, that sort of thing. Ooh. So, yeah, but it, it, now in the product place, placement situation, they're giving it to you. Now, when okay. you're when you're going to a studio service, which is, you know, you probably know this, well, you go and you uh, have to pull clothes from, you know, the different department stores or Gucci or whoever, they let out the clothes on consignment. This is where the problems came. That's in. what I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the problems where, came where, in. where the rapper's boy, where the boys are like, you know, jewelry and then that somebody has to stand next to for all day uh, or put it in your bosom or something because uh, they will literally try to take it. And then you know, you would be on sets with rappers that have like fifty dudes from the hood, and you're in the hood. You're not just you're in Queensbridge with fifty people that's here that's supposed to be here. Then hundreds of others that's not, and five foot two, 110 pounds, right. I have to protect this whole trailer full of merchandise that's probably up to about a cool $100,000, you know? Wow. But you know. You been in a situation before, Deidre, where you, you was like, I'm girl, not let me really- Girl, people don't you mentioned you. Queensbridge, okay. so. That's, yeah. <laughs> no, but you heard what she said to me. She said people never, ever, not even test it, not even test it. No, because it's like, at the end of the day, I come from a place where I know what's going on, Yeah, you know? So when I see, and I also talk to people with respect, and tell people what's really going on. Like, I got kids to feed, don't mess me up. You take this stuff, then I'm messed. You know, I gotta, it's gotta come out of my pocket and you take it on my, you know. So you talk to people like, they're like, oh, baby girl, it's all good. You know, I got to whatever. And if I could get you something, if I, if you know, cause it'd be like some free sneakers. Here you go, take this. This mm -hmm. is what you get. You can't mm -hmm. have this. This mm -hmm. has to be paid for. It's just common sense. That's mm -hmm. all. Oh, mm -hmm. street sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Converse sucks. Thank you, Tidra. I appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> can, I just, can I ask my style, one more stylist question? Like on that note, since you talked about being in ciphers and being on sets and whatnot, did your experiences as a stylist uh, kind of make you a little apprehensive about entering the music business? Or were was it like, okay, I feel like maybe I know a little extra because I've been around? On the other side well, of yeah. yeah. No, it didn't make me apprehensive as much as it made like, these people are crazy, mm -hmm. you know? As hell. And, yeah, they crazy <laughs> and it's different. You know what I mean? So like, I learned then this is not real world. Like you're from a place where when someone says, hey, teacher, I, you know how you do They really mean that. They mean mm -hmm. it. When I'm from in New Orleans, your face is, what you see on somebody's face is what it is. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in this situation where you cannot tell who's real, who's not. Or what their intentions what, are. You know, so then I just got to this place where I just assume everybody was fake. It's better that way. <laughs> Surprise me. Yeah. Surprise me. Lower Surprise me. <laughs> and it helped me moving forward to, and, and it helped me moving forward in the music to realize that there are way more good people than I thought. You know, mm -hmm. when you start out thinking everybody's a little phony and fake, and then when you start to meet genuine people and you connect with your tribe, it, it gets really cool. So it helped me to think that I could endure it knowing what I was getting into. How did you make the transition from styling to songwriting? Um, I broke my leg. I broke my leg. We were doing a job in like Topanga Canyon or something like that. And I had taken time off and I was, this was my first job back because now I'm hating styling. You know, I got to the point <laughs> where I was hating styling, just like I was hating. What, what was, was the hating. straw that broke the camel's back? I broke my leg. I was <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the, I kind of meant the client, back. but okay, I get, it, I get it. I get it. And I just kind of like, with, I, I was I was healing up to go back to something that not I I loved working with my friends and all this stuff, but as much as I like clothes, I like putting them on myself. I'm not 
I'm not a person of service type of person, you know, Word. I'm really an artist, you know, I'm yeah. really an artist. So it was just strange for me to kind of want to do this, not open up my mouth and tell anybody I want to do it, but I'm putting clothes on people that are doing it and no envy of them. It just became very frustrating. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And God literally broke my leg and sat me down and made me have to figure out what I really wanted to do and come to terms with, because I already knew, just come to terms with, like, go for it. Raz did something real foul to me. He just had to help me. He didn't have a choice. He did something so foul that he didn't have a choice to deny me what I was asking. And that's kind of how it started. <laughs> from from, from, from the song, right? Yeah. So, okay, without getting into what he did. So when you say he, you know, he did you, was that, that he put you on in some way, like with a job just, or songwriting? He or, just introduced me to someone. The first person I went to sit down with before I even went to go make my album was Rodney Jerkins. Mm. He was working oh, okay. on my friend, my friend, um, you guys have to pardon me. I smoke a lot of cannabis and my brain cells be trying oh, to get good. it together. When um, I um, could cannabis. have loved her more. <laughs> <laughs> but my friend, um, he works with, uh, because at the time we had worked with Will Smith for years and um, my friend, he worked with Will Smith. And so he put me, he, he knew lots of different producers and he was really good friends with Rodney Jerkins. And he just would hear things. I don't know how he knew I wrote. Maybe I was, maybe I recorded something over a beat or whatever and I let him hear because he was my friend. So I didn't mind letting him hear it or whatever. And he was like, yo, teacher, come. He's writing for um, Destiny's Child. He's working for Destiny's, working on Destiny's Child's album right now come to the studio and meet Rodney and blah, 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 blah. And that's like the first person I sat down with. And I think that's when got, uh, 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 Raz started to take it serious that I might really start doing this, you know? And then when that thing happened and then he just was like, okay, cool. I'll introduce you to Paul Pauly. And Paul Pauly and I just started kind of getting a vibe going. And Paul Pauly, I don't think thought I was that good. He was like, you got to sing more. You got to push more. You got blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, I don't really want to do that. But okay, I'll try because I just wanted to, I just wanted to make music. And we just kind of started going from there. But I don't know. Was Paul, was he, well, well before we get into that, which is your songwriting stuff, um, Dip It Low, how did that come mm -hmm. about? All of my songwriting came about while I was working with Paul Pauly, working on okay. my album. They were all songs for me. Every song I gave away, until I started to actively write songs for other, which I learned I wasn't really good at writing for other people. I was better at writing Man, songs for myself and then letting them fit into my outfit. You know what I mean? So that's, yeah, that's where all is, of my songs came from that. Is it hard writing for other people because, you know, you would have to know their life experience in order to speak for them? I think Quest is like, goes back to being a stylist. I didn't really want to do it. And I'm a Sagittarius oh. and it's like, we really want to do what we want to do. We so hell bit on doing what we want to do. So when I would sit down to write for people, I don't think I cared enough about what their experience was, you know? Like I didn't get it. I didn't care enough to get into them. I had to literally write for people that were just singing my songs. It was so hard for me to try to figure out what this little young pop girl want. I just had to just put myself in that place. I couldn't consider her, mm -hmm. you know? Even, even if it's a situation of a big client that- you, you Yeah, know, Mary J. Blige. I, I was gonna say that Mary song, I Mary hear you. Blige, yep. and, you know, that song is I couldn't you. be married, plus I probably could be married because you know, she raised all of us, you know what I mean? So, but the thing is like, I had to put, I, my way of learning how to do it was to say, okay, you become this. Now you become this because trying to pull it out of them or have these kind. Some people, it's just like with styling. Some people don't know what they want to say. Yeah. You know, some people don't know what they want to do. And you just got to give it to very, them. Yeah, you know, it's very hard to pull personality and all this stuff out of it because you have to understand it. Also, at this time, we're doing better now. But this time when I was writing, it was trash out there. So <laughs> I'm coming in and I'm singing this song and it sounds so great in the air. I was like, oh, and I was like, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is great, this is great, this is great. But the bitch can't sing. So now, that, now she's trying to sing the song, and you hate the song. And you hate it. I, and now and you're you end up. Me. You're looking at me, and I'm. Looking I did my job. <laughs> so are you? <laughs> are you there nine times out of ten uh, for the vocal tracking? Like, do they want you there? Sometimes. To... Sometimes, and then okay. sometimes not. But if I'm there, you know what I'm doing for us? I'm putting the voice on. I'm just gonna layer myself all over this thing and we're gonna sound good and it's gonna be good. Nah, straight up. And that was straight the trick. up. That was is the this, trick. Just are layer yourself all in there. 
You and Fonte. I'm, I'm, you yo, know, I'm really listen. I feel, Amir, are you peeping that like? Yo, yeah, that, yo, that's why I fuck with Tijra. Journey and everything. I'm really. I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, Tijra and Fonte are parallel. Dude, uh, like I, everything we, she's we saying. Best friends in our hands. Yeah. Straight up and down. We and her. We didn't talk on Twitter about doing something. <laughs> listen, no, what? everything you're saying. Nothing. It's coming. It's coming. We just, you okay. know, for the right time, but it's coming. But okay. no, seriously, everything you're saying, Tidra, that was exactly like what I saw kind of like working as a songwriter. And it was just one of those things where it's like, okay, I done wrote the song. I done sang it. I done tracked it, produced it. I might as well keep this shit for me. You know what I'm saying? Like rather than sending it to whoever else. And, and you I, spend nigga, a I, lot of money. I wasn't, I've never been signed to a publishing company. So nobody was putting me in the studios. This is before home studios and all that. I'm spending all this mm-hmm, money going to these studios mm-hmm. to write these songs now. You know what I mean? I'm spending all my money going to these studios. Sometimes I will go in and they will put me in or whatever. But when you're gunning to just get a song to an art, artist, you're, you're going to go and be proactive and, you know, mm-hmm. figure it out yourself. And then you're loving it. You're loving it. You love it. You love it. And then we go in and she can't sing it and you're mad at me and i just never understood that like i said we're doing better now with getting artists that can actually perform you know but back then it was rough yeah that was why i think like we saw like pre-auto tune (laughs) yeah it was yeah that was why i think we saw like in like the early 2000s like when you saw like neo um Carrie Hilson, yeah. um, who else? like Sean Garrett, like Sean you Garrett. started seeing those songwriters kind of become artists. Like I saw that shit coming. I'm like, wow. all the work that they doing, yeah, they might as well put the shit out and on themselves. Let me add this, Fonte. The producers getting forty thousand a track, and I'm getting. Let's talk about it. Let's talk all the way about it. <laughs> right. Let's, let's hear y'all talk about it. <laughs> talk about yeah. it. <laughs> Man, so, well, I let teach you. Yeah, go ahead. You know, you're not getting paid. You're not getting paid to the producer gets paid for making it track he gets a, a front end and a back end i don't know if it's changed now because i don't really write for people like that no more my piece is with myself at this point no nah, it's worse but, it's, it's even but, worse i don't but, do it anymore either but it's it's yeah it's but, but the thing is, is so that you, you don't you write on getting, spec anymore that's what I write songwriters are songwriters are supposed to write on spec yeah and i'm not i'm not a work for hire person i'm just not there she and i've never been a publishing company i found that like whoa okay no and i own my own stuff so I'm going to eat either way because people like me and I can just sell my own stuff and I'll be all right. Take us on what, what's the beginning or the genesis of what we now know as complex simplicity. Um, Brad, like the Brad, moment Brad, where you're like, yeah, right, right, let's I'm go. This shit on my own. <laughs> I'm ready. Listen, this is the part I've been waiting for. Let's go. So that's just the thing, right? Yeah. Family's complete. We're not coming back after this, right? It's, it's done. We're not doing this after that. But I did okay. take them back because, you know, that's how it was. <laughs> but I moved to a new place left and we get back together. And then I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. He introduces me to this producer. But in this interim of us not being together and the producer, me meeting the producer, my mom dies. That's my whole world. Mm. I'm, I'm, my family is everything to me. I was 24, five, something like that. I have these two sons. The father is not, he didn't want kids. He told me that or something. This is what it is. And um, I'm stuck. And it literally was like, I don't know how else to explain it, but it was like, I wasn't going to breathe unless I got this stuff out of me. You know, I wasn't going to breathe unless I got all this pain out of me. And that's really what it came from. Me just writing, going every day to Paulie's house in Glendale. And I lived in Pasadena, which is very close to each other in LA. Mm. And going to his house every day and just, you know, first of all, the night before, sitting, standing in front of the mirror the entire time, just writing songs, singing to myself, you know, writing songs, because trying <laughs> to make myself happy, I was very sad. And then going in the next day and laying these songs. And I remember we got down to um, this song that was called, um, it was called, uh, what's the last song on my album? Do you remember the one to Mama? Complex. Yeah, it you. was uh, oh, yeah. out of my head. I think of you. I think of you, yeah. Uh. Shout out to cannabis. But anyway, so oh, I, I, I uh, not the rapper. I man. was I was trying to um, I was trying to perform it in the studio, and I just kept falling. That they were they felt so bad for me. I literally would just keep trying to sing it, and if I would get one note out, I would fall down to the ground and just start crying because it's just a year after she had passed. And I really, when I look back in retrospect, Questy was just me just trying to get all this pain. I didn't care about none of y'all hearing this record. 
I didn't care about if it was going to be number one. That's why people, when people, people say, oh, we wish this would have, I had no, you have to put intentions behind things. Mm -hmm. I had no intention, but to get it out. Just to get what it out. Happened to, what happened to it, I didn't care. And then when uh, one day, Paulie was dropping me off at my house and he was leaving. I was like, we should call it simplistic or something i said it backwards i said something like simple <laughs> complexity or something like that and he was like yeah complex simplicity yeah and then i started to think about it like maybe about a year after it came out and it was like literally what my life was at that time it was you? literally what my life was at that time complex simplicity i was just life happens but i didn't understand that i was too young to understand people die your man cheat and do horrible things to you he might not even say he just, you got kids you know i wasn't equipped at all for the life I have fallen into and uh complex simplicity was the beginning of me starting to understand my path and how I had to go it was like literally like I guess it's just that was the diary of me growing up talk about Paul Pauly because I never knew like I mean I had never seen him produce I don't know if he did anything after that but your record was the first time I really saw him you know uh really featured in that way what was what was his story and what was his background? Uh, he is Armenian and um, okay. comes from wealth. His family owns like jewelry stores and stuff like that. But he loved music. He loved music so okay. much. And I think the thing I knew that he did before Complex Simplicity that did really well was that's the joint. That's the jam. Turn it up. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did yeah, do he that. Did. He did Joyce Jam's Black Eyed Peas. Right. Yeah, he did that. And he worked with Raz and, you know, and I wasn't really eager to work with him. <laughs> I wasn't at all. That's but the first... The very first song that he, uh, the fir very first beat he gave me was caught on that caution. Um, I want to be my less than right. What song is that? Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's not. Uh, it's not backstroke. It, it's, um, it's not backstroke. It's um. Uh, for tears? No, no, no. For tears. I'm so sorry. I know these are my songs. No, we should. We know. No, we. I, we know these songs. I'm mad. <laughs> about it was, is that? Is that caught up? It's caught up. It was, caught up. Yes. It's yeah. caught up. It was caught up. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, that's the very first beat yeah. he gave me, and um, that's the very first song I ever recorded. And that's on the out like that's the very first song I ever wrote in full. It's the very first song I ever um recorded, and we just clicked right away. He's a Sagittarius too. Ooh, goodness gracious! Oh yeah, I know that was yeah. We chaos. used to go crazy like, oh, that white <laughs> wouldn't even understand dealing with this black lady. <laughs> no, it was so fun. like he literally just started screaming at me one day like ah. <laughs> <laughs> know it well <laughs> yeah, Polly Polly was a great guy and like we I had a chance because we did an anniversary thing you know I had a chance to see him and he doesn't do music anymore like you know okay. he went completely away from music and you know has a beautiful family and everything his actually he does do music but he does Christian music you know he does Christian oh wow music because okay this thing that turns turn you out, make you go completely. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll turn you to Jesus. It'll make you go mace on him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and then come back. <laughs> he chose that route, but really great guy. Very, very still. When I hear stuff he does, you know, it still got that same sound. Still like him. him. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, great. Can we just yeah. stay in complex and simplicity for a second? Because I wanted to ask you a question about songs. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, you know, you said you were in the, the, the studio crying and I was looking at the list and I was like, you'll never find, which could technically be like one of those songs, but it comes so hard. And I was mm -hmm. curious about the, the story behind that song too. Like, yeah, and it, I guess it's all right. Yeah, how much of this is autobiographical? I, I'm guessing all of, all of it is, which is, and at the time, I didn't. I didn't know that at the time. They would be like, "This song about rest. I'm like, "No, it's not," because it was pouring out so naturally. I didn't think it was about anything. Mm. I, I I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? I just it was pouring out, and um, you'll never find um, was the the lady. I can't stand the rain. What's her uh, name? And people's and people's. Pe it's an and people's theme, uh, sample, and she was seeing, you know, on that record the stamp that we sampled, you know, you'll never find a better woman or a bigger fool. So we mm -hmm. knew, I knew that's what I was going to build off of when he told me the sample, man, you should hear. Me and Paulie had this great thing, like, mm, I've never had this before in my life. The same thing, like, when me and Raz had this great thing and I've never had it again. It's like these two, those two guys, we had this connection that was something different. And with Paulie and the music side, we would sit there and, like, get so excited you know what I mean so excited about the music so he he let me hear the sample and he was he let me hear where it came from and he let me hear what he did and it was really amazing and I was like and he was just using a I think he used a bit of her singing in it and I was like okay that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna speak from that because 
I was going through a bunch of shit mm-hmm. in my relationship at the time. And I was leaving. I hadn't left yet. I mean, I was like one foot in, one foot out. You know, when you're a um, mother of somebody's children, they kind of got access to you probably up until five. So I always tell my homegirls, like, if he got a baby mama, he's still smashing yeah. until she kids about five. Because that's just kind of how it goes. Just how it goes. I don't know why, but it's Yo, you know, taste space. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taste space. Hey, listen, right now. I, I, I fuck with Tija Moses, son. Listen, That's all I'm saying. Twins, twins. I'm, I, I, <laughs> so this is essentially. Wait, can I ask? It, it, how familiar were you with Marvin Gaye, dear? <laughs> and how much influence did that have? I mean, at what point did you realize that? This wasn't just an album of yours, but this was your diary, your social media, your. And were well, were I, there anything that was too TMI that you decided, nope, I can't put this verse on there or. Yeah, this this is everything not for no. sale. What's not for sale? No, I didn't. I didn't have that kind of several for Koof at the time. I just was doing what <laughs> came out. <laughs> I didn't know to, to filter myself. But let's let's let me tell you this. I had heard here, my dear great album blah 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 but not really paying attention you know i hadn't really paid attention like that right until afterwards right i was i got into it and i connected with it so very much i heard it before but i mm-hmm. think not until i lived that right and then experienced it after it and i remember one time i pulled up the blake sleep <laughs> and i was playing here my dear <laughs> i was playing here my dear and rap it was like don't listen to that. No, don't. You, you shouldn't listen. To that. <laughs> he was like, don't, listen don't do that to yourself. Don't listen to that. That you, you should. If you want to be happy? Don't listen to that. I mean, it was just like I didn't know. I didn't. And to say when you ask, when did I know it was my da- diary? Quest. I didn't know the album was that good because I I'm hard on myself, right? So I right. never thought it was that good. I didn't know the album was that good till about three years later. And what was yeah, so what wait, gave you wait, that? Wait, wait. What was the? Yeah. Well, how did you was, know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it started reaction, coming hopefully. back to me. Yeah, it started coming back to me, you know. Right. And it became it became the international fuck that motherfucker album. It, yeah, I and mean, live people, your life. People start coming up to you shaking and crying and yeah. you know, freaking you out. You say, Oh, well, maybe you did something kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe you did something. But I never I never took it that serious. To this day, I don't. You know, I just feel like we do things, it pours out of us. We I feel like we're just vessels. Like, a, you know, you Facts. got the opening and then you got the spout mm-hmm. and God pours into you and you pour out and that's just how it goes. So I don't. You just got to be open to of, receive it. And I don't hold a lot of ownership to the accolades that come with it or the criticism. I don't hold that stuff. So I can't really hold, you know, like, like oh, I did this thing. And I'm just grateful I was a vessel. Talk about Be Your Girl. That one mm-hmm. was so for us, like on the on the like the heavy hip hop side. The thing that caught me about that is it was a sample of or it was a replay of a a, a record Nas did called One on One, which was it was on the Street Fighter soundtrack, which like that so shit random, was crazy, right. so random. Like it wasn't like a big Nas record, but it was you know if you knew it, you knew it. And right. so I was like, oh damn, she's singing over that. Then the beat drop, I was like, oh shit, she's singing, singing like this shit is hard. So how did that one get chosen to be the single, and kind of what was that trajectory like? to see that record kind of go up. The label chose it as the single. Um, I thought it was slow. First of all, I didn't want to be so mellow. Y'all see, I got this hyper. I, I could have been a rapper. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have such a hyper personality. So I didn't want to be so mellow. That's where Polly came in to like smooth me out. You know what I mean? He was like, well, his number one question would always, and it annoyed the shit out of me. He would always be like, would Aaliyah sing this? Would Aaliyah sing this? Would, mm-hmm. would Aaliyah do that? And I'm like, why do you keep? Because I wasn't really... I wasn't like, you know, simp- like soft like that and sensual mm-hmm. like that. I mean, maybe I was and I just didn't see it. You know what mm. I mean? Because my friend would always tell me that's always been me, but I didn't see it. So um, when that, when we first started on that beat, it had these dirty, dirt, way dirtier drums. Like, okay, kind of grimy sounding, not, not so like, they didn't crack like the ones that are actually on the record. Mm. And Raz did that. Raz, um, he was like, Put the Mary Jane girls drums on it instead, you know, and that's kind of how that came about. And the Street Fighter thing, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I didn't know that that was a sample from Nas thing. I don't know. I just yeah. would watch Belly every day, <laughs> multiple times, <laughs> multiple times, sitting on my couch smoking a joint, 
what and she's probably sipping some type of two buck chuck from Trader Joe's. Yes, and, the shawl. Um, yes, the shawl. Oh, <laughs> shawl. <Whoa. Shop. laughs> yes, bro. This is the day where you just have to find a little coin to get through, you know. And so I would sit there and I would watch it, and I just got so infatuated with Nas, like. I made this idea about who this man was that probably really wasn't him. And then I just got into like listening to his music <laughs> and all of this stuff. You know, I was, just, I was so, 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 so into him that I just started writing this song, you know, with him in mind. Like, you know, it wasn't Take so much Africa. particularly. Oh God, Amir, my least favorite question. Oh, but where was he Yo, going? Where was that's he going? Far. The continent. Where was he going? Far. I just put Africa my money. In I put my money where my mouth is. I have a closet full of twenty Africas. I knew that. I was like, Yo, I'm, I'm gonna make me some Africas far T-shirts. I'm my only client. I got like twenty Africas far T-shirts in my closet right now. Oh, one. That is my yeah. gym shirt. My Africa pajamas. Is far. Nah. Yeah. Um, so with uh TVT, I wanted to ask you particularly, what was their deal as a label? I knew them particularly uh from just doing all Lil John stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, but Television what were your tunes. dealings with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV tunes, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, TV tunes. What was your relationship with them and how was how did it go with them? So I went through um, I don't think I ever told anybody this. So I went through a production company that was uh Paul Pauly and a guy named Dubs. I don't know Dubs' last name. And sorry, Dubs, but I'm gonna tell the truth. So um, tell it. I went through them and and what happened was they signed me to TVT. I really didn't want to go to TVT because you know, I've been working with, um, I've been working with all these major labels and I really didn't want to go to TVT. Um, mm. But I did pray and ask God to send me the best place. And I definitely think that was the best place because I'm a natural born indie artist. So we went over there to them and also a lot of other places, they liked me, but they didn't want me to write my whole album. I know mm. I no one knew who I was, but I knew I had to sit. It was the whole point was for me to write the album, even more than singing it. I wanted to write it, you know? And so they agreed for me to do that. And um, Brian, shout out to Brian Leach, who is the owner of Polo Grounds with ASAP Rocky and all them now. Mm. Um, he uh, was the a at the time. And he really, really, you know, fought for me really, really hard and, and took care of me while I was there. But... <laughs> I signed to them direct. I didn't sign to them direct. I went through Bridge Entertainment, this production company, because that's back when that's what people would do. You would go through a production company. And Dubs tried to flip my advance in the street. <laughs> wow. then, Wait, the, uh, can you <laughs> break it down? So okay. You be slightly more transparent, uh, okay, he but to, not transparent to the point of to, in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he tried to cop. He, he did go. He ended up going. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, he tried wow. To okay. Bricks with my money, honey. And so what? He, he, yes, he tried to flip my, my advance and ended up going to jail. And then I'm just here. And du and Pauly was the music guy, he was the business guy. So mm -hmm. I'm just here. And it's just me and TVT. And shout out to Brian Leach because he took me and my partner, my sister Tamia, and he just took us under his wing and kind of just looked out for us because we didn't know what was going on. We didn't even know, what we, we had no clue what was going on. And he kind of just took us in and looked out for us. And um, Steve Gottlieb was like nuts, but I dealt with him really <laughs> well because I didn't have expectations. See, when you come in and you've gone through one the 101 of the music people, you know, and the mm -hmm. Hollywood people and all that stuff, you know they're crazy already. So I knew he was crazy, but but he did give me what I needed. You know, I think I was the first, I think Lil John was kind of pissed because I was like the first one to get like a certain amount of money for a video. But but mm -hmm. I need I wanted Pike Williams. They were so happy to be a small label to get Pike Williams that they just gave him, you know, and it was still a discount, believe me. Right, right, right. Discount, the homie you know? price. Yeah. Right, exactly. So um TBT, I have no qualms. People have such bad things to say about the people that put them on because it didn't go right. You wouldn't be here without those people. Mm -hmm. So I have Nothing bad to say about TVT. Shout out to Steve Gottlieb. And I love Brian Leach. He's one of my really, really good friends. TVT was very, very good to me. And I think it was a great place for me as well to hone my skills. Because like I told you, the first song I ever wrote was on my first album. So I hadn't been doing it long. So I got time to just like go in the studio. And a lot of times I was using their money to write songs for other people that I'm supposed to be working on my own now. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. So they mm -hmm. helped me a lot. Brian Leach would just put me in the studio any city I'm in, I would be like, I'm in such and such. Can you put me in? He would put me in and I would just 
hone my skills. You know, the more you do anything, the better you get at it. So TVT was a great college for me. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing all this, where are your boys? How are you handling uh, being a mom? Uh, I live in California with, at that time I lived in, um, we live in an area called Altadena and we literally live like two streets over from each other. We all, it's like a little uh, uh, above Pasadena, a little neighborhood nestled into the, into the mountains. And we, they would look out for me. My mom was sick. She was probably, she passed by that time. My mom had passed Mm -hmm. by the time, so she couldn't help out, but my sisters would help and Raz's mom. She would help oh, okay. so much. Like gotcha. my first tour, she took them, stuff like that. But for the most part, I would be able to be there. Definitely able to be there. I prayed and asked God that my kids would be certain kind of people. And I think that that God was like, okay, well, you're going to have to be there. You're not going to be able to do a lot of the things these other people are doing because you have to be present for your kids. And that's kind of mm. how I think that. Does this explain why there was such a long gap between albums? Um, I gotta have something to say, Clark. I would really love to be somebody that could churn it out like that. <laughs> like, I just yes. really have to have some life experience. Like, after I did Complex Simplicity, I didn't know what to say. I just knew how to make music really good. So how did you, you feel when? How did you feel when the album was mastered in sequence and done with? Like, was it was it a purge feeling? Like, okay, I got everything out that I wanted to get out, and what now? Or I wasn't, I wasn't present. So I don't know. I can't tell you. Like, I was just rolling. You have to understand, okay, family fall apart. Mom dies. Now you out here with the album. Now you on the road. Blah, blah, blah. I don't even have time to think about it. Oh, uh, so you get doing. time to process it. No. And, that's, and then are you making sure you're making up for what you're doing? Because I'm thinking about now you going on the road singing the same sad songs that you, that you came up with, you know, that you were trying to get out of your system. That's Girl, a, that's I didn't give a, a shit no more. I didn't give a <sighs> shit no more. Okay. One thing about a Sagittarius, once we get it out, this is why people can't stand us. No, I, I know. I, I'm with one. I understand. Friend, mm-hmm. Are you a Sagittarius? Are you with one? Okay, I'm, I'm with sorry, one, bro. yes. But if, once we get out what we have to say, we don't care anymore. We don't okay. care anymore. You know, like once we Facts. say what we have to say, and we can say some foul shit, Bill. and we don't mean to be so foul hard, shit. But but once we get it out, it's done, and now it's like, come on, let me make you something to eat. Let's have a drink. Ah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, so y'all I'm assholes. Good. And then we just left with the shit. And we like, okay, well, yeah, wait a minute, let me get my mind you know? right after you just drop the bomb and right, shit. Right, like, right, right. Like, what am like I supposed not, to do with that information? But it's not like I'm not offering you a drink with that information after that information. So I'm on stage just that's having true. a good time. Oh, that's true. Now I'm out here just having a good time. You know, that's when it just turned into so much fun traveling all around realizing i'm not the only crazy because if you think are out here singing this stuff with me and you can relate y'all just as nutty yeah, as me you crazy so too. i'm not yeah. the only one, <laughs> not the only one. <laughs> wait, I, wait this uh i just remember a, a, a good question uh okay i'm trying to remember this is a legendary location the album cover did you shoot that cover at the infamous do you know what the style what? house is yeah. uh is that st- okay? It's a, it's a. I think it's a mid-century modern. Is that mid-century modern? Are you talking about the style of it, the architectural style? No, no, no. St- okay, so it's it's kind of a house that you see in every Hollywood. Yeah, what's movie. love got to do with it? You know, yeah, all the, yeah. It's called. Uh, not what's love. What was the Ricky Lyman? Is that the first place I saw it? Yeah, that was a. Uh, that Lyman. was uh, Why the Fools Fall in Love. Why the Fools, Why the Fools Fall in Love. Yeah, that's the one I saw it in. But it's been yeah, in but it's, it's it's literally it's called um. No style S T A H L and it's uh Oh that's what it's called. Yeah, well not the it's 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 just that's the location. They titled it the style house. Okay. And it's been used in over you know uh, at least three hundred, I mean probably yeah. more than five hundred Hollywood movies. But it's it's very recognizable. So when I saw that window and thing in the that's backdrop, the only part of the house that's nice looking, unless they've upgraded. <laughs> yeah, I was, that's what I was, I was, wow. was going to ask you. Okay, so similar to similar to the diner uh, that Quentin Tarantino used in Pulp Fiction, which is mm-hmm. another kind of Hollywood staple. Like this this diner is never used to serve food. It's only used for movie houses to look like it's a diner. But I went in there once and looked horrible. I w- always wanted to know, like, if that house was vintage or was it classic or empty When I or- was there, um, there was still a lady living there. I mean, I don't know if it was this old couple, but the old lady was still in there. And I, I ended up seeing, I saw her in her bed and, like, she was kind of sick or whatever. But they had, like, carpet and it was kind of, mil- like, only one, that part. 
that part of the house where the window is in that area, that's the only part of the house that was nice. I'm sure now they probably invested more money in it to make it better. But when or I was maybe there, not. I was, really? or maybe not, because it was it was doing what it was doing either way. Because you know, it's supposed to look right. like it's 1960 or 65. So that's not the part I'm talking about. I'm talking about the other part of the house where it's okay for it to look nice 1960, but there were technical issues like mildew carpet. You know what I mean? Like mm. these things can be changed out. You could put more carpet and it still be 1960. So how how did your what was the most apparent change in your life now that you made the transition uh, from you know not being a singer to being well known uh, in singing? Like, what was the what were the pros and cons of your 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 newfound transition? The pros as a writer, I started making a lot of money. Okay. I was really cool. I was literally w without a place to live. I say homeless, but I was without a place to live because I could live with family, right? But I didn't have anywhere to live. I had to, um, I got evicted. Well, I didn't get evicted, but I had to leave before I got evicted. And mm -hmm. being a kids were just kind of like staying where we could. And then like a $300,000 check came. And then it just then it just started coming every three months more and more and more. And that was cool. And was that that was all songwriting money, royalties from songwriting songs because you have to understand nobody was like checking for complex simplicity like that. Mm. That was just you know artists that I mean that was probably like a little sprinkle it there somewhere, mm. but it wasn't like the bulk of it. And um, that was so, really really cool. That was cool to like go from having nothing and and to see that like your intellect, your intellectual property could garnish it, and um people started to come at me, you know, to kind of sign publishing. It felt very cool, cool to say, no, I'm okay. So you know song, song placement money is good money if you can place it on the right artist? Yes, and I also think you got to own your publishing because if somebody that if somebody part. gave you a check and now they're taking, you know, Steve uh -huh. Godley used to tell me, he used to always try to get my publishing, he would say, teacher, you must not believe in yourself. Who? You don't believe in it. Steve, Steve Godley, Godley, the owner, okay. the owner right. of uh, TBT. TBT. He would say, he would say, you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself. Why wouldn't you sell your publishing? You must not believe in yourself. <laughs> and I would literally nah. laugh like that. I would laugh. I, I believe in myself. That's why I'm not selling this shit. All right. Like, yeah, fuck out of here. So that yeah. was my that was my biggest change. And then um, because you have to understand, I didn't meet people. I wouldn't walk down the street and people notice. It wasn't anything like that. And not until I got to the, like Europe or something. That's where mm. people would notice me. <laughs> but I got to make money. Which really kind of, Raphael Sadiq is one of the artists that I watched and looked at and what he did. And it was kind of like, I love how his thing goes because okay. he doesn't, Raphael can walk, Ray right? can walk around, be himself, do himself, yeah. you know, and every mm. now and then it's like, oh, Raphael, blah, blah, blah. Not an but he doesn't get, but not an essence, of course. But I mean, yeah, like, he, he, he gets people that comes up to him, but it's not like in a yeah. bothersome way. He gets yeah. to do what he loves, live his life, make his money, be a normal person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I saw that from the gate and I thought that was super, super cool. So I was kind of like not never, I hate to say it, but I never really wanted any type of fame. I just wanted to be heard. Because yeah. I'm not the type of person that you can just run up in my face with cameras yeah, exactly. and say something I, crazy I, right, to me. Right. Or, I do not and then need I have a to million strangers in my life. myself yeah. like a celebrity. But that's I'm why I conduct myself like a celebrity. I'm gonna conduct myself like a real person with real feelings. And I'm gonna treat you according to how you treat oh, me, no matter who you are. You know what right. I mean? So that was something I was really grateful for. I didn't really, I didn't want that. But you Nothing. know what? I, 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 I see that happen to people. I was gonna say, that's why it's important to share like your story. That's why, it's, I mean, it's, it's remarkable in that way because you are that person. And the same thing, I know Fonte talks about that all the time, but a lot of people don't know that like, you can be a whole working successful musician and you don't have to be on every commercial, every TV thing and be happy. Unless that's what you want. 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 And I think it's beautiful when people want that and they get that. But so when people ask me, you know, well, what advice you have to give to the other car? Know what you want. No. Because you, you want. move. And, and even more so than that, know who you are. Like, because I think yeah. there's some people that are like, they just have that thing of like, like a Will Smith, right? Just as an mm -hmm. example, he's not a singer, but just will is will like he one minute he jumping out of plane and then he doing a movie and then he's discovering earth and then this nigga losing weight like you know what i mean like he just always is doing something and and there are just so some people that are just those big personalities and then there's just some people that's just like look i just want to make what i make put it out and then y'all can leave me the fuck alone mm -hmm. right and i have and to have a second and job 
And, and right, listen, right. baby, don't ever say I'm not successful. I get up every day and do what I want to do. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So That's what I'm I might not about. live. I might not be on the cover of your magazine. I might not be the song you hear every time you come on the radio. But if I wanted that, please believe me, I would have it. I never had intentions of that. All I wanted to do was not work some type of job I hated and be able to take care of my kids. That was yeah. it. Yeah. That's why How this isn't the, surprising. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's why I was not surprised to hear her response in that way. Because if you're a real fan of Teacher Moses, then you kind of kind of had a feeling. Of it that. makes sense. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How did so? Um, speaking of that, how did your situation with uh MMG? How did that come about? And what was kind of the like? How did that go? Well, I lived in Miami. I moved to Miami. I think 2009, August 2009. Okay. I moved to. So by 2010, I think uh, Ross had caught wind of me. I think he found out about me in Atlanta because Atlanta is a really huge market for me. And so um, he found out for me in Atlanta. He said some ratchet girl was telling him about me or something like that. <laughs> and then he reached out to me on DM because we only lived about 10 minutes, 20 minutes away from each other. So like that. And he oh, asked wow. me to okay. come over. And then we all hung out and it was cool, you know, and uh, that's he had, he had just gotten me. Well, he hadn't signed anybody yet. He had gotten me okay. and got Wale and he kind of was like kind of building his thing. And um, and I would just go in and sing on stuff and it was cool, but it just never panned into anything. OK, gotcha. Yeah. So the record when you put out uh, Cognac and Conversation, was that stuff you were recorded while like during the MMG time or was that just a completely different thing? It was during the MMG time, but I was never signed to them. And anything that I was doing for like I paid for all that, like, you know, I was taking care of that. Like it was just something wow. I was doing while I was discussing with them, you know, um, uh if we were gonna do something or not, you know. But um I'm like a one I'm a I'm a woman, you know, yeah. like I'm a grown woman. So it's like mm. kind of different to have this, you know, I don't really just slip in line with everything. You know, mm. I'm teacher. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Already know. The Already woman know. in the crew, the singer you know, of the crew. Woman, though, that girl, woman yeah. with two oh. kids, you know. Yeah, so, nah, you facts. Know, but it, it panned out, and I was really grateful because I would give him, I think, probably up until like maybe two albums ago, I would sing all over his stuff. I would, I, I'm very loyal to anybody that extends a hand to me. I'm very, very loyal. If you need anything from me, you know, I'm just, I'm. if you have ever done anything to be helpful to me, I'm always here. And so wait, wait. I would sing on this stuff or whatever. So people thought I was still connected because I was singing. Oh, off. okay, gotcha. Was it was the mm -hmm. process different in this record, in that? Um, oh yeah. You worked with one producer. Yeah. Uh, for the last Very. album. And multiple producers for this record. Yes, very much so because I did tons of mixtapes before that album came out, right? Mm. And so I was kind of like, it was just a really like, <laughs> it was like Luxurious Underground. That was the one for me. Like that was. Oh, it, that, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I would do these mixtapes. And I think because like I said, the first album I did, you have to understand I had, not only did I have Paul Pauly, I had Neo and mm. I had Paul Pauly and Neo and they were helping me through this process of creating the album. Then I didn't have that anymore. And then, so now I'm just making these mixtapes and I'm kind of learning how to make an album through exercising, making mixtapes, making all these mixtapes. So by the time I get to Cognac and Conversation, that's just the mood I'm in. That's, but I kind of just gather, I make music constantly, always making music. I'll start and it'll just be like a verse and a hook. That'll lay there for two years, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back to it and the verse and the hook becomes that. And then I listen to the music and now, now I make doing more to the music and things like that. And that's kind of how uh, the process was for Cognac and Conversation. I didn't have this pain to pour out. It was more so just like music coming out mm -hmm. than these these feelings. Do you understand Yo, what I'm saying? So was that hard for you? Because that was Very. that was yeah, that was something that was tough. Like learning how to when you're used to, I guess, creating from a place of pain or trauma or like a bad. Yeah, I got the whole Mary Blake J. Blige thing. The more pain right. I'm in, the better the music. <laughs> <is better. laughs> it really is. It's really whack, you know, to the point to where I'll thrust myself into some bullshit mm -mm. to feel something. Mm -mm. Just no, for a good no. dude, just for the jam. I was going to ask, you're not the first person I know that keeps their ex on standby. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying you said that, but I know people that yeah, actually I said, I got to get with my ex real quick. No, I, I, I know people that actually Let me spin the block. Their ex on <laughs> Right, get their ex on standby so they can finish this last verse or something. I like need, that. I need some toxic tales. You know, it, it really <laughs> what it is is like you need to feel because I'm a genuine person, so I can't, I can't just you know, 
act like I feel something. I always, everything I, everything I say and do is coming from my heart. You know what I mean? So like, I just, at that time, cognac and conversation was more about, okay, you're at a place where you, you know, you're no, you're not in pain anymore. You're chilling, yeah, you whatever. Are. And you're ready to go out here and do your thing. You're a grown woman, you're sexy, you fly, like, you know, go out here and do your thing. But it was different in writing it because that ain't really deep. I'm not mad no more. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you work on, on that record, you work with two very good, uh, two good friends of mine uh, from the Bay, my man, Trackademics. Trackademics. And oh, yeah. you did the uh, So Special record with my man, Brandon, uh, one, uh, one of a kind, One Oak. How did y'all link up? I was very surprised to see you and happily surprised to see you work with them. How did you uh, come across their, their work? Oh my God. Wait, whoa. whoa, whoa. I never knew that's what One Oak stood for. Wait, yeah, what one is, of a kind. I didn't yeah, either. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought it was the address of the New York Club. I'm okay. No, but I, I my mind, I'm like, why would he name himself after that night night spot? Me too. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely had to ask him that question, and he told me what was going on. Uh, I definitely had to ask him, well, why? Because I like Brandon. How you could have just been Brandon? Right. That's how I always called him Brandon. That's how I was. You know, shout to shout um, him. The Bay another place that you know a lot of support in the bay bay and i you know i have cities in america and outside of america that are cities that i can always get my money from and so the mm -hmm. bay was one of those cities and um trackademics hit me a long time ago because he was just such a fan of this is all social social media how i met them you know because he hit me and he was a fan of complex simplicity and i'm the type of person that i don't just like eh, eh, i don't do that i really always go look and see who this is i don't care if it's somebody that's huge or you know whatever i go check it out and see and I just loved his sound to this day. Like we work constantly, oh, we man. always work together because he has such a great sound. And to me, I'm okay with evolving into anything that I'm supposed to evolve into, but there's a base to what my sound is. And I don't, I don't like to um, really kind of like dismiss that base. You know what I'm saying? Like it can be mm -hmm. something different and, and fresh and new, but it has to have that base. And he completely has that base. We call it um, champagne soul. It's like, it's really, <laughs> yes, really indeed. sophisticated, you know, yeah. twirl. The girls don't twerk, they twirl, you know? Yeah. And so it was just very easy. <laughs> it was very easy for us to connect. And Brandon kind of came along with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I um, I, I like that the record. Um, that was on the, the luxurious underground joint, the So Special and Missing You. Those are my two ones from that. I, I love Thank both you. of those songs. For Thank real. you very much. Missing You was like a spillage mm -hmm. from the album that was supposed to be The Young Lions. It was just spillage from this album that yeah. I dismantled. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, the young life. What happened? What happened with that record? Um. Well, Paulie wasn't there anymore. I think Brian was dead set on me working with one producer like we did before. Okay. But like mm -hmm. I said, you know, I, I, I hate to be vulgar. People think it's vulgar, but I always say making music is to, for me. I can't speak for other people. It's like having sex. And I'm not a very promiscuous woman because I can't connect with everybody like that. And I don't do mm -hmm. things just to do them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So me and Paulie, we had good sex. You know had thing. We had yeah. the chemistry, you know, mm -hmm. and I just didn't find somebody else to do that with. So I would go out and work with all these different people, but I don't think that they were trying to recreate that, that thing. Mm -hmm. And so before um, we could figure that out, uh, I was ready to go, you know, yeah. and then TVT kind of just went and fell apart. It went uh, bankrupt. In of your in your material, I think the person that I hear that you have a really good chemistry with, and I don't know personally, you know, if it, it compares to uh, Polly or not, but you and Bink, like y'all mm. do not fucking miss. Like I mm. love the records y'all do together. What was because it we like working we, with him? We, we, we really friends, you know. Okay. Like Bink and I are really friends. Like Bink will uh, call me and vent, and I'll listen. You yes, know. He will. <laughs> Yes, he will. <laughs> so we Shout out there. to Bink. Shout out to Bink. Much you know, love to Bink. Yeah, you will. And so, so I, I think that's the thing. I think that um, I've been in the studio with the most, the most world-renowned and amazing producers. And like I said, it's like sex. It don't mean it's going to work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think me and Bink just have a good chemistry. I think because I really genuinely like him and he genuinely like me and we care about each other. So it comes out that, like that. And I wish I could just have sex with anybody, but I can't. And that's kind of how it is with music. I can't. I can't. I can come in here and I can have every good intentions to make this great, you know, but if it doesn't click, I don't know how to go in the mode of like, this isn't clicking. Make it click. I don't know how to do that because I feel like I'm in my sweet spot when it when it's like rolling. When I force it, it gets really whack. And I don't like that part of what I do. It makes me start to feel like I'm like, so I'm like I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it make you question yourself. Yeah. Were you and Anthony together? You and Anthony, uh, when y'all did um, that one record, were y'all together in the studio when y'all did that record? We were. No, no, we weren't. I did that by myself and then I sent it to Anthony. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was another one of my favorites. And, and that was a track. I don't want to say because you probably know who, because you probably know them. You're from Philly. Okay. From nah, Philly. I'm in North Carolina. No, North Carolina. Oh, you're North Carolina. Okay. Well, some friends of mine from Philly. Um, I'm from Philly. Mm. I know. So I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but some friends of mine from Philly, I only had so much money to make the album and they wanted more money for the album. So I just took my vocals and gave them to Bink and Bink murdered it. It turned out wow. way better than I thought it was going to be with the first track, you know? And that's kind of how that happened with the Anthony Hamilton record. And then uh, we sent it to Anthony and he got on it. Okay. Nah, that one, that shit was dope. I, lo- I love that record. Thank you so much. For real. Mm. Um, was your s- label situation with uh, Shanaki when you, in 2015, how were they uh, working with them compared to TVT? How was that for you? I learned to appreciate TVT a lot more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I learned that you don't need a <laughs> You weren't expected that, Fonte. I d- you know. Hey, it's Team Jamosa. I know what she's going to give me the real. I learned that you don't need a middleman. That's what I learned. Yeah. I learned you don't need, a, you don't need a middleman. Facts. You know, is your, is not your for what I do. I'm for your current situation, are you your own manager right now? or? Um, We have it's just we have a team. Me and my sister are partners, and that's kind of how we roll. I, I guess I would be partly my own manager because we just kind of work together on it. But right. um. I've never had like big management or anything like that. But is that like being the wedding planner and the bride at the same time? I like, don't know. No, I don't be the bride and the wedding planner. I really <laughs> just be the bride and my sister just. Oh, my sister shoot. be the wedding planner. Okay, yeah, she, she, okay. she, well, she should be sitting here telling you how crazy I am and how, you know, it, she takes on a lot of hats and, you know, stuff like that. It's mm. definitely, I would love it for it to be, uh, you know, where I'm completely detached from it, mm-hmm. but it's just not possible. What do your boys think about now that they're they're artists? Mm-hmm. Coast Contra. Shout what out to do Coast Contra. They yes. think about the way that you have lived your career and the things that they're gonna they're taking away from it as far as you know to be in this great indie artist that you are. Um, well, they saw the up in the right, down. Right, right, right. So it it makes me feel happy that I didn't do so bad in the down times to make them be like, I don't want to do this, you know. So that mm. makes me happy. And um, they just always ch- have always championed me like. I get nervous to let them hear anything. Always have since they were little, you know. Like I just really respect their opinions so much, and um, I think more than anything, it was kind of they were kind of like me. They had it in them, burning it in them. They didn't even tell me forever. I didn't learn. One of their friends told me that they rap or whatever, you know. I didn't even know. I think that they just saw. Uh, <laughs> oh, this family doesn't share their intimate <laughs> humble, the humble with each yeah. other. That's what they called. This is, this is nah, for they real. They told right, who didn't know thought, that his girlfriend We thought that you down. wouldn't want us to rap because, you know, dad raps, you know. He didn't know how you feel about dad. <laughs> no, you feel right, yeah. <laughs> but in my mind, you and him are like friends now. Like, we, it's like 30 years, 20 years later, 20 some years later. I had, listen, I love him with all my heart. He's my first love ever, you know, first everything, you know what I mean? And so I love him with all my heart. And But we don't have any beef, nothing. We super cool. We mm. always, like, we could be, we could always be friends because that's always who we were. My only qualm with him ever has been not being a father to his children. That was all it. That was it. You know, so now we can say, he don't like when I say stuff like this. Like, mm-hmm. I can't rewrite what happened, you know? So it's cool. Like, we can sit down and talk. We can be cool with each other. He makes me laugh. I make him laugh. We cool. But that's my only problem. So now that that's done, let's have a shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. With the opinions of Teacher Moses, did not Wait a minute, quest. Quest. <laughs> quest. <laughs> quest. 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 One time that you did. Say something to me. You were like, "Is it never mind?" <laughs> Yo, uh, anyway. <laughs> so next, no, no, nah, nah, hold on. Go ahead, Tina. <laughs> it's okay, Amir. It's okay, Amir. It's okay. It's no, okay. we're friends. It's no bad yes, thing. You I said know. nothing bad. You said nothing bad. You just asked me a question. And I was like, "Yeah, yes, I was, that was like, it. I never heard from you again." <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> Check, please. Monte and Tedra love Sabrina. Man, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Busted. So, okay. I so I get it, Amir. So with them, so with um, with your sons, uh, Coast Contra, do you, I guess, do you play any role in their career? Um, like how how do you manage that? You know, with them, you know, doing their thing and and you doing your thing. How do how does that work? Those are my children. I am their mother. Mm. All I can do is off as artist to artist, offer them because first of all, let's start here. 
I ain't going to sit up and pretend like I know a lot about this business because I've been in the industry of Teacher Moses. I haven't really been in the music industry. The record business, right. Yeah, right. I'm in yeah. the industry of Teacher Moses. I make I my money you. off of, I very rarely open for people. I was always doing my own shows, my own, you know what I mean? So I don't really know much about that. So I'm not going to sit down and act like I know this stuff, you know? Um, but I, what I do tell them is about navigation of human beings in this space, you know? And I tell them about being good. I think one of the reasons they didn't want to tell me for a long time because they knew if they were whack, I was going to tell them. I was going to say, <laughs> this is not good. You would have you know told I me mean? that, though. You sound like Fonte. I, Hell they, yeah, you got to. Did the same thing Listen. With his son. Yeah, like, listen, bro, you want to hear it from me, because if you hear it from me, you know it's coming from a place of love. You hear it from the internet, them niggas don't give a fuck about nothing. (laughs) They used to say all the time that they wanted to be basketball players. Have you ever seen their dad? Have you ever seen how tall I am? Right, right, right. right. It's not happening. I told them all the time when they were a little girl child. (laughs) How tall are you? I'm five. She's five, too. Yeah. Wait, really? She's five two, five Damn. two standing outside the trail in Queensbridge, son. Listen, and, and stacked like mind, that. Like five, <laughs> seven, five, Everyone says that. I think the complex simplicity. She talked tall. Over, I talk, maybe. I talk <laughs> like a giant. But I think the complex simplicity, because I get this all the time. I think the complex simplicity album where my leg is kind of out of something. I think people think that that's a long, long leg. Now, I have a, I have a long leg. But that's all. <laughs> I legit thought you were like five eight, long leg and a short yeah, thigh. Definitely not, definitely not. But I will Man. say this, Fonte, it's so much more pleasurable to see them doing what they're doing mm-hmm. than it was for me because I did it out of depth desperately to take care of my that's... kids and to like get to not be. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're doing it because they just love it and they, they enjoy it. it and they're happy about every single thing. I went to see them um was that last week or week before last. They're opening for Corey Day and they were on stage mm-hmm. and these people don't know who they are and they're chanting everything and singing everything. And it's like my heart just wanted to bust wide open because it's just very good to see your children pursuing their purpose and getting reaction from it. You know, it makes you feel really, really good. And I also know how long they've humbled themselves and just worked hard and kept their head down. And, they, you know, and now they're getting reaction to it, so it makes me feel really good. Yeah, nah, they've been on it for a minute. I mean, I've seen them like they going up now. Like I've seen like a lot of stuff, like the LA leakers mm-hmm. and all that. But I be telling them like, yo, nah, them boys been on it for a minute. Like, yeah, yeah they've been they've been at it. So I'm super super happy for them brothers. Yeah. That's dope. Oh, man, Thank see, you. Ep- epigenetics is is a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, when, yeah. yeah. When you, it's the real love in hip hop. <laughs> when, when your family <laughs> passes the genes down to you, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to ask Teacher one thing. I wanted you to break down. Um, I think it would be really uh helpful for all our listeners and some who are you know aspiring artists and independent artists. Um, for you as an independent uh, as R and B, because that's R and B is super. I tell everybody it is so much harder doing indie R and B than doing indie hip hop. Like it's oh, yeah. they are two completely different more. worlds costs a whole lot more way more expensive so for you um what moves the needle for you do you find is it shows is it videos is it um you know is it content you know just releasing shit on ig or whatever um what are the things that work for you as an indie artist that you actually see um dividends from well i definitely you know well i see dividends from the shows i definitely that was that's what kept me for the most part um But I think it's just the owning the publishing has always, you know, those checks come yeah. through. You know what I mean? And so mailbox um, money. Yeah, it, it, it comes through. And um, and you know, merch does decent, but it's not because I'm not trying to push that as much as you know, because I love music. So pushing yeah, merch. I'm not trying to start a clothing line. I have, <laughs> I have to think and then like and have people help me with that. But um, I think more than anything, what is the most uh productive, not just money wise. But right, the right. shows and touching people have made me have like this kind of more cult kind of following. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I've been seeing the same people in these, these. I have like a lockdown, like 10 to 11 cities that I'm going to always get my money in. And I see these people all the time. I know their children. They now bring their children. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know all these people. And I think that, um, I think the internet is great. And I think it, it can get you to a lot of people. But I think ultimately the real connection is when you're on stage, you know, and when you get off stage and you talk to people and you do like, I, I'm a, I was always big on before people were doing this, like these pop-up shows. Okay. Because I travel a lot just because I like to travel, you know? And so um, I would just pop up in cities and just in a small bar and get a guitar player. And blah, blah. I love that kind of stuff. Like, wow. I love that kind of stuff. 
I love real connection with people. I think that's what it is with me. I like your experience with me to be very intimate. So it feels like I'm your friend. I don't want you to fan out over me because that's weird to me. I just want you to be my friend, Man, you know? Listen, yeah. That's all. How do you use, um, in terms of using social media, because um, I talk with a lot of artists now, um, which we're different because we kind of came up in an age before it. So we know kind of what it was before. But mm -hmm. artists now, like social media is just something that you have to have some yeah. kind of presence there. Yeah. Um, and that's not something that we really had to have. So how do you navigate that um, in terms of using your social media? What works for you? What doesn't? How does that work for you? Well, you know, I started with MySpace and I've always engaged and I've always engaged people and I've always been transparent. I've always been very transparent on social media to, like I said, to make people feel like I'm not someone up here. I'm your homegirl next door. So when I say, you know, whatever I'm saying, what I've been through and blah, 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 or if I'm on a video telling you this and the third, you're not listening to me like somebody talking down to you. You look, listen to me like someone talking across to you, like a friend. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I approach social media. It's new now because it's like called content, but I just have always been doing this. I've just always been being myself on social media. Um, I have to step it up now because it's like uh, social media is a job. It. I, I fucking used to hate love it. it. But the thing is, I used to love it. I used to really freaking until love you had to engaging do it. with it people is a job. until it became a thing. Like yeah. now it's like, you know, this, that, and the third. But I actually do like it. So I'm triggering my head back into like liking it. A lot of the things that are going on now, I used to do them before. Not because I thought it was a thing, because I just wanted to do it. Do you mm. understand what I'm saying? I so I just could, I continue like I, I I always say, you know, continue what you're doing and go harder to anybody. Just continue what you're doing, and go harder, and that's how I approach social, social media. Just now, I'm fixing my mind, being that I'm moving into new music, to continue what I'm doing, but be more concise and like strategized mm. about how, you know strategizing how I want to do it. I love to yeah, watch you stand no. in your power on, on Instagram. I was just thinking about that. I was telling the guys that I was like, I love that you stand in the power who you are, not just inside, but also outside. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty it, girl. Yeah. I mean, you're gorgeous. <laughs> That's what I mean. You're gorgeous <laughs> and you're surprisingly thick. So I was like, I love. Yeah. We shouted you out on. I must shout out the little brother shouting you out on yes. our gangsta grills. That yes. Like my situation, baby. That was awesome. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> What? That's <laughs> crazy. I never knew that. Like, little brother did say, you know, and here's the thing. I joke a lot. Like, I, I, I think I'm cute. I think I'm pretty. But it's far more beautiful women, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But that's just a sagittary thing. We big ourselves up. We don't wait for people to cheerlead for us. We just cheerlead for <laughs> ourselves. Like, I keep my pom-poms ready in case I need to pick me up. That's just kind of how I am. So people just, <laughs> people just experiencing me being myself, you know? And I think that it comes across from me. <laughs> it just... <laughs> It doesn't come across. Oh, I wish I like could just see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was Her pom-poms serious. in a different place, but still. No, you got pom-poms pom -pom. up there. No, Listen, you got, I, I got pom-poms. They just locked down right now, girl. Well, I got no, I've seen them on the IG. So. <laughs> yeah, we've seen them on the IG. Yes. <laughs> yes we've Man. seen them on the IG. Uh, exactly. So your your new record, the uh, So Special Getting Record. I mean, not So Special. Not So Special. I'm sorry. Uh, Make Me. Um, yes. With uh, you no know, Brody Brown, uh, Uncle Chuck. I love that record. Is that no? Nah, that record is, is fucking great. I love it. Thank you. How is that setting up a new record? Like, where are yes. you? What you working on now? Which where, where, where yes, you at? Yes, um, I'm working on I'm called the bullshit. Um, it's based on what I went through after my kids were grown up, right? And uh, I didn't, I didn't date. Um, I tried a little bit, but then I realized you got a lot on your plate, right? And I, I'm a person that when I love, I get all involved, right? So I didn't have, I couldn't just uh have a man in my life that might deter me from my responsibilities, which were taking care of my kids and making music and, you know, all that stuff. So I didn't really date. So by the time the twins left and moved to LA to start pursuing what they wanted to do with music, um, I just went out in the world. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a man and, you know, I'm gonna give my life and all this stuff. And I was trash. It was trash out there. Dating was trash. It was, it was trash for you. Now. In California? Trash. Yeah. Tra no, I was, I was going, but I travel. So it's not just in California. Okay. I'm in New right. Orleans. That's I'm true. in LA. I'm in Miami. You know, I'm in New York. I'm, I'm in all these places, right? And it wasn't that, I'm not saying that everybody's trash. It just was trash for me because I need genuine connection, you know? So I decided, I met this guy who was really, really cute. And I was just like, oh, he's going to be the one. I'm like, ah, oh, pull him in, whatever, you know? Because I'm a businesswoman. That's how we handle everything. A single mom and a businesswoman is the worst because we think we can make anything happen, right? And so I pulled this guy into my life and I pulled the biggest bullshit into my life that I have ever experienced. 
I almost went gay dealing with this dude. You understand me? I don't even Ladies and like gentlemen, you. Teacher Moses. Okay? Yeah, we just, he the interview just started. Out. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he wore me out. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, I, was I, this I, the dude that was on your IG? Because I would see something you would post. Was, would you post no. him sometimes? Or, okay, it wasn't. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I'm not, I would never. He could be my husband. We could. I will. Ne- you'll never see some man that I'm dealing with. I don't. Okay, think okay. The smart thing for women in, in music yeah. you know, that are known. But um, yeah, it's just he just. I liked him so much, and I just felt. I just felt like because I'm I'm into you, you should just really be good. And it just didn't pan out. It was just I put myself in that situation, and I mm. wanted to blame him, but I couldn't. So. I, there's a period of time during that, it's like four years, that I wrote all these songs. Mm. And it was like, what was coming out of me at that time? Genuinely coming out of me, not me trying to conjure it up. Like, you know, I have a record on there with um, Kay Trinata and Duran Bernard, and it's yeah, simply called yeah. Fighting Farewell. Cause I'm just, I know I need to go. I know this is done, girl, what are you doing? And I'm fighting, I'm fighting. So this is what this album is about. It's about, you know, trying to go out here and date and the bullshit. Mm. I encountered and the emotions I encountered, but also the Make Me album. We have a remix with um, Currency and Eric Bellinger. That's, that's the one. And Eric Bellinger, about. yeah. So and we so have to good. talk about the Kitchenada, the Be Your Girl, like yeah, that's remix. What like saying. we have to like and and the record you did for him, the Culture Joint on his album. Actually, and that was co-written with my sons. Oh, it was. It oh, was nice. right. Yeah. Yep, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how did you How did you feel about the 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 remix bringing that song back? Some 12 years after not even 12. Yeah, it was it was wild though. He it, it was like 12 2012 and I had record was released in 2004. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it, it was is, a long yeah. time, yeah. But um I felt really good and I love him and I I I, I just thought it was, it was it's super cool because we got to we did that and now we own it and you know I can't talk yeah. too much about that. No, nah, <laughs> I was so no though. No, nah, I was so happy. I'll say however it happened without putting a, I was so happy to see that be available on officially on streaming service. However it gets done, I don't oh, care. But we got together and we did it. And so yeah. um <laughs> so, so yeah. But I was really appreciative and I just feel like um to be honest with you, Quest, that made me feel good as a songwriter. You know, I feel uh-huh. Be Your Girl makes me feel really good as a songwriter because even if it's the original or the remix or one of the other t- 10 trillion remixes that people have done, the fact that I did something that long ago genuinely from my heart and people still like it today, it makes me feel really good. I love Maze for that reason. So the fact that I have a song that can come on way later and people still get into it, it just makes me feel really good as an artist. More than the financial gain of it, I feel really, really good as an artist. It's the same. I love it. Well, you know, I I almost feel compelled to do our traditional ending, in which we all say what we learned today. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got ooh. I I will say Let's I learned it. that if Let's you do don't it. come correct with Teacher Moses, listen, yeah. you, you out of here, son. You will be done. Come, become part of a narrative. What you yeah, she, gonna, go. she gonna write? She gonna write a jam about your ass. All right, what um, else did we learn today? I learned. I did not know. I swear, I did not know that uh, us shouting you out on the gangster girls that that you know that that gangsta changed. Like, I had no idea. Yeah, we was just. I mean, we was just showing you love. Like I was, that you know. Was I, so I mean, sweet. thank you. Nah, we was just showing you love. I, I mean, I've been bumping complex simplicity, and so you know, we, me and Boo was just talking shit that night in the studio. We decided <laughs> to keep it. So, um, nah, I've been a fan forever, and you know, just I see the people you work with. You work with like a lot of you know homies I know and people I really respect, and um, I just really appreciate the way you've moved in this game. And it's just you're always someone that I've always looked at. You know, you, um, my brother Eric Robeson. You know, mm-hmm, what I'm saying just yeah. on the R&B yeah. level where it's just like. Yo, it is people out here that's eating, like that are yeah. eating good and making and good raising Kendrick, and raising Kendrick. families. Kendrick, yeah. absolutely. Kendrick, the family yeah. soul. And so um, I just, you know, thank you and commend you for just, you know, being just that person and that artist and just having that integrity and, you know, always putting your best foot forward in the music that you put out. It really means a lot. Thank you. You know what else I learned? You ain't what? nobody else go yet. You, you and Fonte oh, and Bill have Bill I learned so much. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Y'all can talk. But, Amira's all I'll, I'll say. Go ahead, Amir. It is your show. No, 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 go ahead, Bill. Oh, I learned two things. One, uh, Fonte and Tedra should have their own podcast. 
and two. <laughs> yeah, album um, first. Album. Call, call yeah, in conversation. Hey. Yes. <laughs> conversation. Yes. And two, uh, I've never been so proud to be a Sagittarius in my whole life. <laughs> this is a big night for me. Yeah. yeah. This is like a Sagittarius know, Sagittarius appreciation sh- hour. <laughs> I didn't know shit about being a Sagittarius, but I know a whole lot now, and I feel I very not know, right? knowledgeable. Listen. <laughs> Lesson I didn't learn. Yeah. All right, Leia, what'd you learn? Oh, See, uh, I didn't. Oh, oh, well, I'll just do it real quick. I uh, I have just learned that what I already knew that Tidra is my whole tribesman. Every everything yeah. that she does, facts, I kind of do outside of singing and songwriting. And also, uh, I've been learned that Tidra Moses is an amazing softball player. I just want to throw that out hey. on top of everything else that she do. <laughs> this bitch can kill on a field. Boom. What you play softball, Tidra? <laughs> Well, I had to that day. I'm kind of the kind of person. I you did what I gotta do. No, you you stole you stole bases and everything. Yeah, we played. We played I was on smaller softball. than I could run faster. Wait, y'all on a softball team together? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes Wait, Laia, you know what? How did I not on? know this? I used to play on the boys and girls club on the softball. Yes, man, I'm here. Oh, my God, name is Laia. Steve, she knows what the sports are. <laughs> the sports. I the know sports. what the sports are. All right, Steve, what you learn? Uh, I learned that she's cool and I like her and she's a great interview. Um, thank you for doing this for us today. I also in defense of asshole boyfriends, um, sorry, but we do, we do help you come up with good materials. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. The, the bullshit about to be jamming like a motherfucker. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. When is it coming? You have a date for it yet? Not yet. This year. Not yet. Okay. This year. Okay. 2022 Ooh, is coming this year. Yeah. You okay, know, cool. it, I, or, you know, our listeners won't be able to see this, but OK, so she started mentioning it and I was like, all right, instead of me looking at my uh, my psychedelic uh, kaleidoscope imagery, I started putting uh, um, on my television screen belly. Hey, oh, don't <laughs> know, no, no, Dog, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, belly with the volume down is actually yeah. it's great. It it's looks better. amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'd never. Yeah. Really notice the cinematography. It's a two hour video. It's a video. Yeah, it's a video. Ain't no script. Nigga. Ain't no. <laughs> yeah, a script. Like, I'm beautiful. It's a plot. Come on. Like, oh, the, the lighting down, on Terrell Hicks. <laughs> with the volume down. Where is Terrell Hicks? She don't. Mm. Some of them are probably being very beautiful still. She, is yeah. She? yeah. Hopefully. I know you her know sister's in gospel play. No, no, no. I just remember that her sister was on a reality show on a gospel play. It's a whole other thing with Jenny Wine. You know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I know she's around. Anyway. No, for real, teacher, this is long overdue. We thank you very much for doing the yes, show. Yes. Thank and, you guys uh, so much. I had a great time. I said you before I go, congratulations on your great documentary. It's really, really amazing. I really appreciate that. And I look I, I appreciate all that it's getting too because it was so cool. Hopefully by the time this makes it to air, I will That's uh, right. take a Oscar, Oscar winning. Hey. Yes. Listen, this is the perfect day. Teacher and Katanji, let's go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. So on behalf of the great teacher Moses and I'm Pay Bill and Shook Steve, Fontigolo and Laia, this is another classic Quest Love Supreme Extravaganza. And we will see you on the next go round. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>